Hi! This is the second part of a two-part tutorial that will show you how to have live images and text as weathered paint on a brick wall using masks. Last time we learned how to isolate the mortar as a solid colored layer of its own. This time we're going to use that to age the paint on the bricks. So if you've done the first part, you can just open that file. I'm starting where we left off with the shaded bricks. The only difference is that I've named the mortar layers, which there wasn't really time to do in the last movie. If you haven't done that tutorial, you might want to do it before doing this one. So, this is our layer stack. We have the mortar copy at the top. We have a number of type layers, some of which have effects on them. We have the painting, which was taken from a Dover book, and we have the brick wall behind that. And behind that, we have just the mortar, which you probably can't see because it's white. And I keep it back here so that I have a pristine copy in case I ever need it for any reason. To start aging the bricks, the first thing we're going to do is hide everything except the mortar by holding down the Option key, that's Alt on a PC, and clicking on that layer. Now we want to have the mortar because when you have aged bricks, one of the things that happens is the mortar protects the paint where the mortar is. It kind of is a hollow so it doesn't get washed out as much, so we're going to have that darker. I'm going to make a copy of the layer by holding down the Option key and dragging up, and that gives me the copy. I'm going to right click and I'm going to apply the layer mask so that it's no longer a mask, it's part of the layer. And then I'm going to go up here to Filter, Blur, and I'm just going to blur more to take a little bit of the edge off of that. Then I'm going to hold down the Command key, that's Control on a PC, and click the Make New Layer, and that makes a new layer below the layer that I currently had selected. Tap the D key, and then hold down the Option, Alt on a PC, and click Delete or Backspace in order to fill that layer with the foreground color, which is now black. Now, this is going to be a mask. The important thing to remember about masks is that anything that is white is going to allow the stuff that's on the layer to show, and where the mask is black, it's going to be hidden. So what we have here, if this were to be applied to the painting right now, we would have painting where the mortar is, and nothing where it wasn't except where we have these little spots here and there. It's easy to remember because stuff that is black hides in shadows, and stuff that's white you can see very easily. We want to start aging this. One of the things that happens when you have a brick wall aging is that the rain leaves sort of streaks on it. So we're going to show that here by using fibers. We're going to go up here to Filter and Render Fibers. Now we had to fill the layer first because you can't use fibers on an empty layer. It has to have something on it. This is Fibers. Um, opens this dialog box. There's no preview, so you can't really see what you're getting until you click OK. The slider up here changes the variance that determines how much gray you get. If you're on this end, you really don't get anything but black and white little short things, and down here you get more of the gray, um, longer fibers. Strength determines the fiber length and also determines how dark and um, how fine the lines between the fibers are. So we're going to go for a pretty low strength, like 3, 4, 5 around in there someplace. and um, variance sort of middling low. The randomize button gives you a different set of fibers. When you reuse this filter, you get the same thing every time unless you click randomize, which changes your random seed. So every time you click randomize, you get a different set. We're going for something that's sort of light and dark. So let's go ahead and keep this set. Click OK. And there we go. We've got fibers. It's rainwash. So now remember, this is as if we had white paint on the black wall. You can kind of remember that white paint on the black wall. You get an idea of what you're getting here, although unless you have a lot of black paint, it's only going to look about half as faded as it looks here. Okay, we're going to add some more layers. Add another layer, fill it with black the same way we did before, and this time we're going to add some noise. Just go to Add Noise, make sure that it's Gaussian noise, monochromatic, and then Think Bricks. And this is to break up the fibers so that they aren't so smooth, so that they don't look so much like fibers and look more like rainwash on bricks. So we'll leave it there. Then we're going to blur this by going and getting a Gaussian blur. That's filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Add something less than a pixel so that you have just a little bit of blur so it's not quite so sharp. And now because we want this to break up the fibers, we don't want to have a normal blend mode. Let's go for, let's see. Let's try Multiply, and then we'll dial the opacity back quite a bit, because we want to have, we, we want to be able to see the picture too when it's done, so we want to have some there. 
We can also change the blend mode. Maybe we should do darken. Or we could try overlay. Nah. Back to multiply. Okay, let's do one more layer. This time we'll put clouds on it. Um, get a new layer. You don't need to have anything on the layer to use clouds. All you have to do is go to render, clouds, and you get clouds. And this time let's set it to overlay, no, vivid light. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Reduce the opacity. And I'm going to reduce the opacity on the mortar as well because it protects the paint, but it doesn't protect it completely. So it should be faded out a little bit where that is. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to select everything by holding down the command key, that's control on a PC, and then tapping the A key. And then I'm going to go up here to edit, copy merged, because I want to get everything that I see, not just the stuff that is on any one particular layer. And now we have the mask on the clipboard but we have to put it on the layers, and there are a lot of them, and one of them already has a mask, so how are we going to do that? The answer is, we're going to select all of them, and go over here on the layer panel to New Group from Layers, and we can name it, and that will give us all of the layers together in a group, get a layer mask, hold down the Option or Alt key, and paste, and we are masking the entire group, not just one of the layers, the whole group. As you can see, if we click over here, we have the entire group masked, and we've got a beautiful weathered image there. So drop the selection with command Control d and if I decide that I don't want to have it quite that faded, because I'm in CS4, I can click on the mask here to select the mask, and click on the gray area next to the masks panel, and I can reduce the density of the mask. So I can say, no, I don't want it that faded. Let's fade it more like... That's pretty good. And the best part about it is that this is all live. So I can, for instance, select this layer, take a picture that I already have, and change the picture. And it's weathered just exactly the way the last one was. Looks good and I can change the type. I can do anything I want to because this is live inside the weathered paint. And that's how that's done. Well, one of the ways it's done anyway. This has been Robin Wood, and I hope that you found this helpful.